Hey guys, this is video number three of your fantastic math movie night extravaganza. So uh, hopefully you still have some uh, popcorn left or something good to munch on while you're taking in this last of the three videos I wanted you to watch before coming to class. So it, solving polynomials is is really kind of a big thing that we're going to try and kind of keep manageable. Uh, there are a lot of different ideas. Um, you have already watched a video on uh, Descartes' Rule of Signs, so we're going to talk about that in this video. Uh, you have done a little work with uh, long division and synthetic division, so you're going to see that again in this video, and then we're just going to kind of round it out so we can take a look at how we can actually solve for the roots of a polynomial function. Okay, so I'm going to try and um, kind of hit this fast and furious, hopefully not too fast. <laughs> if you need to go back and watch it again, that's totally fine. And um, I'm also going to try and, and keep it manageable in terms of the time length because uh, I don't want you to run out of popcorn while you're watching, of course. That would be, that would be sad if you ran up out of popcorn on math movie night. Okay, so the first thing I would like to talk to you guys about is called the rational roots theorem. Okay, and basically what the rational roots theorem says or is about is uh, if your function, so if the function, it's kind of like we're taking notes right here, right now, right, uh, has a constant, that's the last term, and a leading coefficient, That's going to be our first term. Then possible rational roots are formed by And here's the here's the way we find them. Whoops, invasion of a screen there. Um, they're formed by factors of the constant. So it's the last term divided by factors of your leading coefficient. Okay, so basically what we're trying to figure out is we're trying to figure out if we can come up with a list of possible zeros of our function. And Rational Roots Theorem does state that, that if you can create this list of factors of your constant divided by factors of your leading coefficient, then within that list, there will exist um, rational roots of your polynomial, okay? So that's not going to include imaginary roots, but it will include the rational roots, which is why it's called rational roots theorem, okay? So one of the things that I think is important is to see how this looks as an example. So let's just use f of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 21x minus 10, for example. Okay, so this is our leading coefficient, right? This is the leading coefficient. We'll just abbreviate right there. This is our constant. 
And when we think of factors of these numbers, we're going to include both positive and negative factors. So I'm going to go ahead and make a list of the factors of our constant. So we're going to start with the constant. Factors of the constant include uh, 1, okay, and 2, and 5, because 2 times 5 is 10, and 10. All right, so 1 times 10, 2 times 5, different ways to get 10. Factors of our leading coefficient, and then don't forget that we can say, right, plus and minus each of these. Because if I took negative 1 times negative 10, or a negative 1 times a positive 10, I would get a negative 10. So you have all these combinations um, for your factors. And then factors of your leading coefficient include plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, 2 times 2 is 4, right, and plus and minus 4. So here is our list of each, right? Factors of the constant divided by factors of the leading coefficient. So if I'm looking to figure out um, how I could possibly break down this cubic polynomial or where it would be crossing the x-axis if I graphed it, places it could be could be crossing if you had real solutions could be, and let's see, factors of my constant could be 1, right? 2, 5, or 10 divided by factors of my leading coefficient, my leading coefficient 1. So each of those gets a divided by 1. And of course, these are all plus minus. Okay, so let's try this again. Factors of my constant, okay, those are 1, 2, 5, and 10. And then 2 is another factor of my leading coefficient. So divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2. Sometimes you will see um, things repeating. For example, this 2 divided by 2 is going to be equivalent to a 1 divided by 1. So it's possible that just 1 would be a 0 of your function. And then some other choices are also, again, 1, 2, 5, and 10 factors of your constant divided by factors of your leading coefficient, and 4 is my last choice for factors of my leading coefficient. Okay? So all of these choices from here to here make up your possible rational roots. Okay? So when I ask you to identify the possible rational roots, for your polynomial function, that is what you would do, just like that. Okay, I'm going to pause for one second. I'm going to move this so we can kind of continue our discussion and see how these roots play out. All right, let's see, now that we have a little more space, how we are going to use these ideas. So um, possible zeros that I could start breaking down this polynomial function with might be I could try 5, right? I could try my synthetic division with 5 and see if that created a, um, a remainder of 0 for my synthetic division. Um, I could start with 2, right? Th there are a lot of choices here, right? I'm going to have to try and start with something. What's going to be nice is that you guys are going to most often have the opportunity to also use your graphing calculator. And so what I would do is I would go ahead and grab your graphing calculator, maybe pause the video for a minute, grab your graphing calculator, and um, go ahead and under y sub 1, enter 4x cubed minus 21x minus 10. Okay, and just look for where you believe some of the zeros may be. And see how they might correspond to like 5 fourths would be 1 and a fourth. Um, 2 fourths is the same as a half. See if there might be a 1 fourth or a 1 half or a negative 1 half. And see what rational roots you think we might try. So 
we didn't have the calculator, we would just start with something. We would just try something. So I'm going to go ahead and try a 2. And I'm going to try uh, this 2 right here. Oops. This 2 right here. So just a positive 2. And I'm going to see if it divides evenly into this polynomial function. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be dividing by x minus 2. And I could use long division, but the 0 I am testing is 2. And I'm going to use synthetic division. So it goes a little bit faster and doesn't take up quite as much space. Okay, so let's do a little more practice with synthetic division here. So if you recall, I said that you need, oh, lots of information coming to me. Um, you need to have an x cubed space. If there is a missing x squared term, we'll need to mark that space with a zero. And then we have our x term, so we pull that coefficient, and then we have our constant. So remember the process here is you drop this first number down. And then we're going to multiply as we come around the corner. And then we're going to add going down. Right? So that's kind of the algorithm that we're going to be using. So here we go. So 8 going down. We add together, we get 8. Okay. Oh, my heavens. Stay away. Pop-ups. Um, 2 times 8 is 16. If we add going down, we get negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is a negative 10. If we add going down, we get negative 20. Now, this is where we're really sad. So now I'm like, oh, rats. Okay, because what I really wanted to have happen here is I wanted a remainder of 0. And because I did not get a remainder of 0, guess what? I have to start all over with some other value of h that I want to divide by. Okay? So that tells me that 2 is out of the out of the running in terms of a 0. And if you guys have your graphing calculators and you're looking at this function, you can tell just by looking at the graph that it doesn't cross at 2. Okay? So algebraically now we also know it doesn't cross a 2. So here we go. Let's try something else. Maybe you look on your calculator and you're like, oh yeah, I see it uh, crossing at negative 1 half. So you think, oh, okay, let's go down this road of, of doing some synthetic division with negative 1 half. So here we go. And again, I'm going to kind of pick up the pace so we don't leave our video super, super long. So I'm starting over because I did not get anywhere with that particular trial. And that's okay. You guys needed to see one that didn't work so you know what it looks like when it does work, right? So, um, so we're going to drop down this original number, the first number, and then we're going to multiply and add and multiply and add and multiply and add, and there we go. There's your zero, right? And remember, this is your constant, and this is your x term, and this is your x squared term. Well, guess what? Now I know that this polynomial function is made up of x minus a negative 1 half times this result that I got right here, 4x squared minus 2x minus 20. It divided in evenly, essentially. It has a remainder of 0, so you're like, hooray, instead of rats, right? It has a remainder of 0. And then to continue solving, because remember, the goal here ultimately is going to be to set this polynomial function equal to 0, so that we can actually solve. So here we go. We're going to finish this off. And it looks like my x plus 1 half and my 4x squared minus 2x minus 20, I can either factor it or 
um, I kind of see that all of these are divisible by two. You can, you can factor this. You can go back to your graphing calculator. You can look and see that it also crosses at, I think, a negative two. Guess what? You can use synthetic division on a quadratic as well. So if you know that negative two is a possible place where this graph is crossing the x-axis, and we want to break down four, negative 2 and negative 20. Again, with synthetic division, we can do that. Drop the first number, multiply, add, multiply, add, and we see that, oh yes, hooray! In fact, negative 2 is another 0. So now I have x plus 1 half times x minus a negative 2, so plus 2. And my last 0 is right here, constant and an x term. So it's 4x minus 10. Now you could have come up with this exact same result if you factored, which is totally fine. Um, sometimes this result, this quadratic, will result in imaginary solutions in which case we'll have to use the quadratic formula. We'll practice that this week. But our zeros, take a look at what our zeros are going to be because zero is equal to x plus one half and we're gonna set zero equal to x plus two and we're gonna set zero equal to four x minus 10. The places that you should see your graph crossing are at negative one half negative 2, and if we add 10 and divide by 4, 10 fourths, or 5 halves. Okay, so these are the zeros of your function, and probably they're all, since they're all separate zeros, they're probably all crosses. Right? The multiplicity here is 1. The multiplicity here on each of these is just 1, 1, and 1. So these are probably crossing right through that graph at negative 1 half, negative 2, and 5 halves. All right, I think we're going to stop there for now, guys. Uh, there's a little information on rational roots and getting you going on solving. During class, we will do lots of examples that utilize uh, Descartes' rule of signs as well as rational roots theorem and solving for zeros of your polynomial function. All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you in class.